there! I'm Kehlani Palmasano, and I'm the Emmy Award-winning host of Check, Please, Philly on WHYY, and the writer and host of Delistry, the food history series on PBS Food. For over a decade, I've been working as a food and travel writer. I know, it's the dream job. I feel really fortunate. My travels have taken me across four continents, from exploring the spice route through Israel and Europe, to foraging with the Maori in New Zealand. And what never ceases to amaze me is just how powerful food is, and how much influence it wields over our society, our culture, and our personal lives. That's why I've created a new podcast called Power Dining, a show that examines the power structures, power moves, and power dynamics in the world of food. Sustenance is only a small fraction of why we eat. We, you know, you eat food for lots of different reasons. You have comfort, foods that are nostalgic, foods that are, uh, you know, extravagant and, you know, so but why not food that really kind of scares you a little <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and that you know will be good. You know, it's not, I'm, I don't like eating things that are, that are bad combinations. Some things, there are bad combinations, but things that you wouldn't normally eat that somehow you put together and jello is like a blank canvas. You know, you can throw anything into jello, like you can throw anything into soup or, you know, but I think jello is just, um, is also fun and scary at the same time. That's, that's the point. <laughs> what we eat and how we eat it reveals a lot about who we are and where we come from. I think snacks can embody all of that. Uh, they're delicious, but they also have a story to tell on their own terms. Um, you mentioned at the top that I'm a food and travel writer. Um, and you know, as a as a travel writer, one of the things that I always try to do is look at like this small details um, of everyday life and use them as a lens into personal stories, broader issues of culture and, and place and politics and so on. So in that sense, snacks are, are really sort of just like a, a low key wonder that I think are really worthy of deeper consideration and, and appreciation um, because they are so often overlooked or, or brushed off as inconsequential. Sometimes there is a dark side to food's power over our world. There's there are all these complicated histories that tie in with like the status that comes with certain foods, and um, you know, in, in another you know, another, my brother in law grew up in El Salvador, and when he talks about like um, he, he worked on some coffee plantations from time to time, and you know, he would pick all these beans that when you go to your fancy cafe, you're seeing El Salvador as one of like the really nice types of coffee you can get. And when we would go to like places that he would hang out in El Salvador, when I was visiting him and my sister there, um, they're serving Folgers. Like it's the, the, they're, they're one of the best coffee growing places in the world. And the lower classes in El Salvador are not getting to eat or drink that food, which they are known for. Um, and a lot of times, because it becomes a status symbol, it, it really ends up getting taken out of the community that it really belongs to. But there are ways to take that power back. I mean, one of the big things I like to point people to is that ferments really help provide uh, food security. So if you're able to preserve fresh vegetables and fruits um, and to continue to have the nutrients from them, even when those things are not growing, that helps you and your community stay healthy and alive. Um, and fermentation is one of the many preservation strategies we've, we've employed. So join me every other week in a conversation with guests, experts, chefs, journalists, and food lovers alike to delve deeper into the fascinating and complex ways in which food impacts our world. The Power Dining Podcast is available on Substack, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts.